Hello, thanks for joining us today. This is uh, Mike Mahano with Carillium, the uh, NetSuite practice leader here. And today I am joined um, by Steve Mochin, who is a uh, senior uh, consultant here and uh, well versed in the topic that we're going to cover today. Um, Steve, we, we've got a lot of customers and people that are looking at uh, NetSuite as a solution that you know, to help them manage their inventory better. And, and I think it does a great job, uh, but maybe you can talk about some of the features um, within NetSuite that uh, we see a lot of customers take advantage of when they first, um, you know, start using NetSuite. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Yeah, there's a couple of different options here on NetSuite, really a, a good and then a better solution depending upon how complex you want to get in your setup. I've brought up an inventory item. We're just going to look at, for example, this iPad Pro. This is a purchased item right now. We'll talk about manufacturing later, but this is start with a purchased item and how we're going to look at um, what you can do regarding managing the inventory, the purchasing of this iPad Pro. So if we go down and look at, I'm going to go ahead and edit this item so I can show you some of the drop downs and some of the options available. We'll start with, well, I'll start with the easy one. We'll start with reorder point. So this is the more straightforward one. It says, okay, when I get down to a certain inventory level, um, I want to make sure I can place a purchase order and automate that. Uh, have the system already go ahead and suggest something for me so I don't have to do that on my own. If there's one place to go on that, we'll show you later on. Yeah. Steve, I would say, you know, a lot of people that are looking at this um, are probably managing this in Excel. I mean, it's amazing to me how many new customers we see when we start working with us that are managing it out of a spreadsheet. And it just is, is amazing to me. So having it all in one place uh, is a great start. Yeah, I promise there are no spreadsheets <laughs> that we're going to show today. Um, so the reorder point gives you some options here. Uh, you have the ability to put in a reorder multiple. So maybe you get a discounted price at a certain uh, quantity level or multiple that you can order from your vendor. Or maybe the vendor says, I'm only selling these in certain batch quantities, so I need you to remember to order in these quantities or you know, I'll, you know I'm not going to place your order unless you give me one of these reorder multiples. So that's option. Um, the reorder point here, you see this auto calculate on several of these fields, purchase lead time, reorder point, preferred stocking level, all these are valid uh, for your reorder point replenishment method. Um, and the system will calculate those based on history. So if you're new to NetSuite, new to the uh, system and don't have a lot of historical data out there, maybe you set these on your own at first and you don't have them auto calculated. Uh, that's possible. Or then when you get enough data and history, it might be three months to you, it might be a year, it really might be two years, depending on how much you really feel that you need for the system to help you uh, create the proper uh, reorder point, proper uh, purchase lead time. Uh, those, obviously, the more data you have, the better off it's going to be. And, you know, using your own method uh, might be great out of the box, might be the best thing you have, but really the longer you go, you might be setting things incorrectly based on what you had always done. Well, maybe the, the, this product has trended uh, to be selling more often. So you really need to then manage that. Well, the automation of the auto calculate will give you the ability to just say, the system's going to do it. It's going to take away a lot of the time I've spent doing that. Again, more of those spreadsheets going away. It, it's, it, it's still going to say, hey, this is what we recommend you purchase, and you still have the ability to edit that quantity based upon your knowledge and, and maybe some environmental factors that the application isn't aware of. Very true. Uh, when we get into the, showing you what the output of some of this is, you can see that there is a, a place for you to basically override the system. Maybe you had a one-time purchase two months ago where one of your customers bought way more than they ever had, and that was a, the only time they were ever going to do that. Well, you want to, the system will, in some cases, take that into account, but in others, you might want to just say, hey, I, that's in there, I'm going to smooth it out a little bit. Good. So, reorder point, that's, again, pretty straightforward. It hits the reorder point, it takes in the 
uh, account some of these other factors such as reorder multiple and um, preferred stocking level. So how many do I want to order? The more complex one is time phased. And time phased, you see some of the fields opened up and closed actually. Um, the router multiple is going away. Um, the alternate source item has opened up. This is a really cool one. I like that. Yeah, if, if you are starting a new line of products or potentially just one new product that fits in, a, in an already existing um, line or, or uh, category, you can you say, I don't have any history for this particular new product. Well, I'm going to base it off of some other item. One of the other items that are already you've already sold for quite a while, your, your marketing team might say or your sales team might say, I think it's going to sell similar to this. So we can use this alternate source item to use all that historical data from day one and not have to start from scratch. So that's a really nice feature. So as we go forward in the time phase, this is really where you're getting into demand planning as far as a demand plan and a supply plan. And I'm going to go ahead and, and switch over to those screens and show you how that works. So again, remember we're working with the iPad Pro and if I go into an item demand plan, the way this works is that you uh, calculate an item demand plan and you can see we've already got one down here for the iPad Pro. I'm going to show you the details of that in a second, but I want to show you what it's like to set up and run a, a, a demand plan where I click this calculate item demand plans button. You're going to select your subsidiary, you're going to select your location or you know you can call this a warehouse projection method so here's the bulk of uh, your really kind of neat things that NetSuite will do for you you have four different projection methods this is basically how NetSuite is going to calculate your demand so linear regression most most of these are over historical data linear regression says hey I think we've got a product that is growing over time. Um, I want to use this calculation and there's a complex calculation. I would show it, but I, I really don't. It just, it's not even fun to look at. It's really complex. So it does a nice job of, of taking a look at what you've done in, in your history and making sure that that is something that uh, goes forward and produces the future results based on a trend that it's developed. Moving average is more of a, a flat thing. It's, it's basically you've got um, exact certain time of type of uh, data over the previous three months, six months, nine months, and we'll show you that and, and how far back you're going to uh, go for your historical duration. Uh, but it's going to then map out the future just like the past, but try to smooth it out. Okay. Um, Sales forecast is just that. Your sales reps or your sales manager will input a forecast that's a different. Um, so that's more forward looking yeah. than it is kind of what has been happened in the past. That's correct. That has nothing to do with any historical data in the system. Mm -hmm. And you're, you're trying to look at um, where the data has come from and uh, the sales team will create that forecast system's not going to do that. The sales team is going to do that. So that's all a human intervention. And the forecasting will, will be obviously, hey, I'm talking to customers and saying, what are you going to be doing versus what have you done? Right. So, so the sales forecast is a different topic. You know, we may cover that in a, in a separate session. Uh, it's pretty cool, pretty easy to do to set up. Seasonal average is, well, I'm sure you're familiar with that one. Uh, that looks at the dips and, and heights of your demand over time. Uh, if you have products that sell a lot in the spring, uh, you know, the, for the iPad, it probably sells a lot in the fall when a new um, model comes out and, or when prices are lowered in the fall. So, you know, you might have some seasonal average to that. And that will use those dips and, and you know, heights and valleys um, going forward. Whereas the moving average takes a historical and kind of flattens it out, seasonal average says, I'm going to show you those dips and you know heights uh, going forward in that same type of typically 12 month pattern. So the seasonal average also, if you, the one thing that I want to mention on that that's pretty cool is you have the ability to say, yeah, I want to look at history, but my product is selling more than it was a year ago. 
Okay, so uh, I want to look at the seasonal average and say I'm going to add five percent to that. There's a spot in here to do that. Not not during demand planning, but in the setup. So just know that that's there. So if I want to say okay, I'm going to do moving average. My duration is how far out into the future I want to go. You know, you might be six months, it might be nine months. A lot of that is determined on what your lead time is. If you've got, you know, containers that you're shipping from China, you've got three to four months lead time, and you're obviously going to want to project the duration out beyond that. Um, if it's somewhere that you're, you're fairly local or you can get stuff in a week, your duration might be three or four months. Uh, historical duration, how far back you want to go. Well, really, that's up to you. I like more is better, but you may say, I want to look at the more recent duration, the more, more recent history, because it's better. It's really more reflective of where we're going than we were two years ago. So I'm going to say maybe six months. And then you go through and simply select the ones you want to run. And you mark those and you submit it. Note again, the alternate source item shows up here. So if you don't have it set on your item level, you can set it here. You know the chance to update that. That's great. Mm -hmm. So then going back and looking at the actual supply plan, or sorry, the demand plan as it had already been run, I can view that. And I can have a chance. You see, we ran it out for uh, three months of history, and we did a duration of nine months. So we see the last two months of 2020 here. We have seven in each of those, and if I switch over to 2021, you'll see the next seven months all calculating at seven. So the, yep. the moving average has said, on average, basically, you're ordering seven per month. And those you know, can vary, again, based on uh, the, the historical data. So as we go through here, if I edit it, remember I said you could go in and you could override that. Well, here, you just edit it, and you have the ability to quantities open up and I can change them before I run the supply plan. Yeah, this is, you know, to me, it's, it's a great, uh, a great way for companies that are growing, um, outgrowing QuickBooks, outgrowing their spreadsheets, their manual calculations. And, and, and I think that, you know, what you've shown them today, Steve, I think is going to be um, powerful to say, you know, what can be done in NetSuite as far as manning, managing your inventory. And, and we haven't even gotten into, hey, not only what do I need to purchase for my inventory, but what do I need to purchase for manufacturing and my make to stock and make to order capabilities. And so I think that um, that might be some good content for another video. But, uh, you know, so hopefully uh, for those that are watching this video, you've got some insight into what NetSuite can do for you from a demand planning uh, capabilities and, and some of the automation that's there. So uh, if you have questions and want to learn more about that, don't hesitate to reach out to us. Um, appreciate your time and have a great day.